Hi, everyone. I love a good real estate snoop. So I was researching Shannon Smith's house. So if you're familiar with the Jennifer Crumbly case, she's asking to go under house arrest in Shannon Smith's home. So I thought I'd look up Shannon Smith's home real quick. Happy Friday. I love Friday. I, even when I have to work, I don't know, every time I come on, my nose tickles, I swear to God. Um, must be that if you saw last night, the spermatozoa confetti that went uh, almost went haywire, but it didn't. I caught it before I was glitter bombed by spermatozoa. <laughs> it still makes me laugh. So happy Friday. It's a good day in Tallahassee. Tomorrow is our festival and parade. It's called Springtime Tallahassee. And it, I don't know when it started, but a long time ago. And it was part of the, I guess Miami wanted to be the capital of Florida. And so Tallahassee put on a big parade to uh, show everyone that we could be the capital. And we still are the capital. So, hey, true crime. Are you going to springtime tomorrow? Springtime Tallahassee? Tonight is the block party. And then tomorrow's the parade, which I'll be walking in with the radio station and wearing my uh, blingy T-shirt. We try to walk in every parade as, as much as possible. But I thought I'd talk about, I was like, where did Jenna, you know, I didn't follow the Crumbly case. It's so hard for me to follow children cases and when horrid things happen to children. Oh, you will be there. So we're going to be walking with Real Talk 93, which is our radio station. So you will hopefully see me in the crowd. I'm the one with the crazy hair and a mimosa. <laughs> and I'm at least one. Good. I'm glad you'll be there. So it's a beautiful day here today. And typically for springtime Tallahassee, it's rainy and we all go home or go to a have brunch. But it should be nice tomorrow. So I'm happy. I'm very happy. So again, I thought I'd find out where does where does Jennifer Crumbly want to live for 10 to 15 years? And why would Shannon Smith take her in like that? Like, why would you want that responsibility? Well, I don't know if you've looked at Shannon Smith's Facebook page, but it's telling. <laughs> it's, I mean, we all know what Shannon Smith seems to a be like Shannon Smith is she likes Shannon Smith which I guess you have to to be at that level right your favorite is the street corn I've never had it I've never had street corn I don't tend to eat out of food trucks I know it sounds bad but I just tend not to I don't know something about it I just don't Eat out of food trucks. So here's Shannon Smith's Facebook profile because she's an attractive woman for sure. She likes to comb her hair in court. Remember that? That is. That's Jennifer's attorney is Shannon Smith. And don't you remember when watching her? She loves combing her hair in the courtroom. Her, her client looked like she hadn't bathed in like six months or combed her hair. But she, this one, she's, she's combing her hair. She likes to um, defend sexual abuse. Really nice of her. She's all about it. Shockingly, she only has a thousand followers. How does she only? Have, she's she's very she's a cute girl. She really is. I'm just not a fan of defense attorneys who like Nazar, like that guy from the Olympics, the coach. I think she represented him. I think she did. I think it's what I read. She's defending the indefensible. Ain't kidding. Daily Mail calls her a car wash lawyer. <laughs> I don't know. But I guess she was second seat. Shannon was part of the defense team that represented Larry Nasser, who was the 
uh, gymnastics coach at the Olympics, and he was a horrific human being, and she defended him. And she's made a lot of money off of it. So I'm going to show you where um, she lives, where Jennifer wants to live when she grows up. So this is the road. It's a dirt road. And I know this from her Facebook. So this is how I was able to figure out kind of where she lived. Because her last name is Smith. It's, these things aren't easy when your last name is Smith. So you got to kind of dig. But she lives on a dirt road. So this is it. This is the home without the address, the full address. She bought it in 2022 with her husband. It's four bedrooms, five baths, 7,200 square feet. and this. This is where Jennifer wants to hold court for her 10 to 15 year sentence. Time served. Let me just stay in the mansion on the dirt road. Isn't that pretty? I mean, it's a gorgeous home. It is absolutely gorgeous. But if anyone believes for one second that Jennifer Crumbly deserves to live in that house for 10 to 15 while her son rots away in a prison, I don't know. These people need help, and so does the defense attorney. Your son is rotting away in prison because you were a neglectful mother, and he killed all those children, and this is where you're going to stay? I don't think so. I really don't think so. That's it. That's the house. I just find that so reprehensible. And just so you, let's see. This is an aerial view. You can barely see the road. So here's the road right here. And then this is the house with the pool. That's a pool in the back right here. House arrest with living with her attorney for 10 to 15. Are you serious? I can't even. Miss. I mean, it's Michigan's beautiful. I wouldn't want to live there, but it's beautiful. It's way too cold for me. My daughter-in-law is from there. But this would be Jennifer's house arrest. Beautiful. They do have really green grass. I just thought you want to know. It's north of Detroit. If you, about this home... It's off the market because she just bought it. It's a gorgeous, luxurious home on five acres, a park-like setting. Unique features include natural stone columns, wood trusses and beams, solid wood floors and tile flooring, newer windows and much more. The first floor boasts an open living concept, cove tile dining area, 30-foot ceilings at a fireplace. Gourmet kitchen is a chef's dream overlooking a heated covered deck and blue stone fireplace. Wolf Sub-Zero stainless appliance as an inset floor to ceiling cabinets. Gorgeous. Mudroom, laundry. Where's she going to stay in the mudroom? Laundry lead to a three-car garage. You're going to put her in the garage? Second floor has a spa-like upstairs ensuite with a fireplace plus additional three bedrooms and three baths. Finished basement. Maybe they'll put Jennifer in the basement. Has a large bedroom, family room, full bath, cedar office, and rec area. That's where they're going to put her. Two-story guest house. Includes a two-car garage, kitchen, large loft with full bath and balcony. Overlook an in-ground saltwater pool. God. Well, why not? <laughs> it is just... So this must be where the guest house is right back here. And that overlooks the pool that you can barely see. Ah, guess what? It's great schools. Beautiful aggregate patio, Lake Orion schools. Now wouldn't the parents of the children that go to that school be so happy that Jennifer Crumbly's living nearby? Are you all? It's a must see. I was like, come on. 
come on. What? That judge right there. Jennifer Conley going to be there. She's going to be in the basement. She's going to be in the garage. So in this case, it's a side entry. So the garage comes over here. And then this must be the guest house, which overlooks the pool. They pulled all the additional photos. So there's only one photo of the house. Whose house is this? This is Shannon Smith. Shannon Smith is the attorney for Jennifer Crumbly. Jennifer, prior to receiving her sentencing, her attorney, Shannon Smith, delightful young lady, has asked the court in all seriousness to allow Jennifer to serve, have time served in the jail cell that she is currently in, who hasn't washed her hair in forever, and be allowed to live here comfortably with her attorney, her defense attorney, Jennifer. Jennifer is brilliant. Why wouldn't the court just say, cheerio, let's live here? <laughs> this is insane. The guest house, yep. With their own entry. Who wouldn't want to live in the five acre wood patch for 10 to 15? When someone says something that's stupid, I have to go back and look. I'm like, where is stupid living? Well, Shannon Smith's riding to the bank and she's going to keep Jennifer Crumbly. I mean, she knows it's not going to happen. Like, She knows a court's not going to do it. Why are you allowing? Like you can, I guess, make it's like any negotiation in real estate. I'm a real estate broker in case you haven't, you don't know. I'm Patty Wilson, host of this channel, Patty's Playhouse. And I've been a real estate broker for numerous years and a real estate agent since 04 and a property appraiser. And I'm, I'm always curious when you're presenting an offer that you know, you're going to fail. What is your, what is your outcome? You you're offering 249,000 on a $400,000 house. You absolutely hundred percent know that the seller is not accepting that you're so far apart. It's ridiculous. And the, and the, uh, you, you know, most times, a realtor has to present all offers and counter offers regardless of the number. A judge has to look at all motions regardless of the stupidity of it. Do you, anyone, think, is this just to get Shannon Smith's name? Is it for people to show her house? What is the outcome? Why would you do that? Why would you do that to your client? Because she just looks ridiculous. She deserves to be behind bars, Debbie says. But you know, many people think Jennifer and Hogbrook do not deserve to be charged, let alone convicted. Had a few heated arguments and chat about this case. Well, she was convicted. So whether she deserved it or not, I think she did. I think she was a neglectful parent. And I'm not an attorney, a judge, or like I say, an accountant. I think she was a neglectful parent. I think she absolutely looks like uh, you know, they are. So what gives her the right to stay this when her son's rotting away and he asked for help? If he didn't, I mean, the boy asked for help repeatedly and she ignored it and went to go screw someone. She's had troubles. I pulled some, um, which I, I didn't watch all the trial because I do work. Um, I wasn't sure if her past legal issues have been brought forth but she did have legal issues. And then I was like, okay, so they sold their house. They sold their home in 2022. Where do I have it now? Did I not save it? So here's her house. I can't. I can just view the image. Because what you call it, it will like it. Let's see. Here we go. So this is the house. It was sold in 2022. The Google Street will go down a little bit. It's a simple home. Someone else owns it now.
And she she kept claiming like she made all the money. She was the one living there. Sets a precedent precedent for parental accountability. And I honestly don't have a problem with that. I'm a mother of three and I was a very strict mom. My first ex-husband was not as strict. So I piecemeal find out stuff that happened with my children that I had no idea. And you know, that is, that's, you know, you're responsible for your children. And I said yesterday with Lori Page, if you don't know who Lori Page is, she's been missing since June since June 3rd, 2003. And I, she walked out of her house. Apparently, you know, the police thought she was walking out to run away. I don't think she was walking out to run away. I think there were other issues involved. So this is Lori Page. She walks out of her house. June 3rd, 2023. She's been missing just about a year. She had just turned 12 and her father moved. Lease was up and he needed a bigger place. I get it. He didn't own the house, but my challenge with him is he changed his phone number. So now you don't want her calling you like it, pretend Lori is alive and well and sitting in Boca. Who knows? We don't know, but she knew the phone number and you changed your phone number. I have a problem with that. And I told him basically. And I also have a problem with no matter what, you were responsible for this child and you let her walk. You let her home alone, knowing she'd been a runaway. You let her home. She had an uncle who's a coach. He's a middle school coach. You could have, why didn't she stay with him? Who knows? Oh, I know. I was told she had his phone number. She had his phone number. So Andrew, the father, Andrew Wiley, is responsible for her. But is he help? Is he helping looking for her? No, absolutely not. 100% he is not looking for this child. Shannon is willing to take in a felon multiple times, by the way, and just let it happen. Just let it happen. She needs to hold her checkbook. Because Jennifer has had some issues with bad checks in a while. Just nuts. This whole thing is nuts. But the court's just okay. Who knows? I, I just... Ugh. Those parents had abandoned animals in their house. A couple dogs and one was older to go hide with the cops. And didn't go see Ethan behind bars. They, they written off that kid. They just wish he was never born. There's no way. You would be willing to live in that mansion while your kid's rotting away in jail forever and you never helped him and you felt lonely so you go screw a guy. All of that is nonsense. I don't think her neighbors would be too happy about it either because five acres in the woods is nuts. Right? True crime. Ethan lost out in the parent department. All he needed was love and attention and therapy, not a gun. I know. And the father's case is, these cases are so long. Daybell's case is like eight to 10. Why is, why is it, why are we giving so much time to these people? Stockade. I'm confident Ethan could have been helped. They paid no attention to him at all. And he was smart enough and aware enough to ask for help. I think the school's partially responsible, but that's just me. I think they are, they should be in trouble too. You don't see that happening. Do we think he changed his number mainly because the nutty ex trying to contact him? No, because he blocked her. He blocked her. And you can decline a call. I have no time for this father at this point. He He said, I met with him along with Pastor Ferguson. And we're talking about uh, Lori Page. So we met with him before one of our searches and we were handing out flyers at a cleanup for the county. And he was very forthright. And he was like, I told law enforcement I was moving, but you changed your number. You changed your number, dude. I don't get it. You had family. I later come to find out his mother died in Miami area. Uh, Oka, what is it? Opalaka. 
She died of COVID several years ago. But he has a brother in town. The brother's a coach. He's a coach with raw middle school. He takes care of kids this age. Was she not allowed to stay in your house? Was she too much trouble? But she had your phone number and now she doesn't even have her father's phone number. Talk about dumping a kid. She could still be alive and she was dumped. They did not like him, let alone love him. They did not. That's what's so upsetting about Lori. There were resources for Andrew. There are lots of clubs and after school stuff in Griffin Heights community and family resources. And Pastor Rudy Ferguson, from two weeks on, she, uh, Margie Summers asked for assistance from him because he knows the Griffin Heights area and she works at Griffin Middle School and he was in it to win it. He put out a, I had, I went out of town to see family. Margie was out of town for her spring break with her family. And so Rudy Ferguson took a hundred signs, got them printed. The churches paid for it in the area and took them out and put them in out of himself. I mean, strangers care more about this child than her family. We don't know where she is. Likelihood at this point, not in a good position. Not in a good spot, one way or the other. But how do you, as a parent, change your phone number? How is this any different? Neglect is neglect. And I don't know why. I know law enforcement's talked to him recently. But how are you not on a neglect charge because you left your kid? And now she's gone. How is there not some sort of accountability for these parents? And I, I just, ugh, makes me so upset. And everyone is kind of hem hawed around the parents because they don't want, you know, them to harm themselves. I get that. But they still need about accountability. There can't be a lack of accountability because you're afraid he's going to do something stupid, something else stupid. Own up to your own actions. I know you had to work. I worked night shift. I worked night shift as a nurse for years. So I am with that. But there are other people that could have watched your kid, like your brother, who's a middle school coach. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. The research, the resource teacher dropped the ball for Ethan too. That kid had no one who cared. He also had like 12 to 15 cavities that no one cared about. Imagine the pain and crap. And she's talking about how she had to work to pay her bills. And I'm like, wait a second, Buttercup. Your house isn't all that in a bag of chips. Like, you got issues, Butter. He's just a mess. How much could that, what they sell that house for? Hold on. Her father was the um, power of attorney because I looked it up. Let's see. They sold it for one hundred and fifty thousand. They paid seventy two thousand for it. So, hold on, I got to screenshot this. And she has a tax lien. They have a tax lien of what? I had to add it all up. $2,500 to the state of Michigan. Here's their house. So they bought it here in 18. He hurts everyone in 21 and they sell it. They listed it for 149 and sold it for 150. So it turned out, you know, I was looking at the documents and the, uh, her father lives in North Fort Myers and is a teacher. <laughs> Does anyone get this? He's a teacher. Where was he? 
Where were the grandparents? Where were the grandparents? Hmm. Shannon Smith is not all there either. She was so all over the place, admitted it during our closing. She was combing her hair in the courtroom. What's up with parents nowadays? They're all killing their kids, stepkids. They just want them eliminated. You see, it's a step parent coming into effect. Madeline Soto, Sebastian. I know. That's step parenting. And and these girls, I had I, I had a client call me. She's having an issue with a neighbor, so she needed a survey redone with fencing. And she wanted to put up a fence because the neighbors are have not really been good to her. And it's her property, right? But they haven't been good since they bought the house. I should never come on because it's a fascinating story. And she was telling me that she may get engaged soon. And I just blurted out. Um, get a prenup. I said, because you love that house. You always wanted to live in that house. You saved up, saved up and saved up to buy that house. And in Florida, the very second you marry someone, he owns half the house. And she's like, what? I'm like, yep. So you better be darn sure when you buy a house and then you marry a dude and you put all the money in, there's no percentage ownership in Florida. So if you put 25% of the value in cash wise, you don't get that back. You get 12 and a half percent back because he's getting 12 and a half percent. So you got to be very, very careful who you're married to in the state of Florida and people aren't, they just marry and then come to me and be like, Patty, he's getting half the house. And I'm like, he is getting half the house. It's a homestead state. He gets half the house. If you were married for 10 minutes and changed your mind, he owns half your house. And same with her. You better be careful. That's all. I don't understand how there aren't repercussions for parents who neglect their children. I don't either. I do not either. And I've been very conservative about saying his name. It's Andrew Wiley. I've been very conservative about saying anything. But he's had a year full of opportunities to get his head out of his behind and start asking, where's my child? I need the help. I don't like the media. Well, you know what? You're not going to find him in Thomasville. She's not going to be in Thomasville, which is where you move to. She's not going to be at the prison, which is where you work. So you got to help. You got to help. The media is out there. And, you, and they're willing to help you, but you have to be willing. Why aren't you willing to look for your kid? Why? You're driving up and down the streets. This is what he tells us. He's driving up and down the streets. He put my, tons of miles on his car. Dude, you're one person. You're not going to find her. It doesn't work like that. Law enforcement told him, you don't got to talk to media. What? Yeah, he doesn't have to, but you could have encouraged it. You believe he's innocent. You questioned him. You let him go. You didn't even look at his car for a year. But where's his child? Just, ugh. She let her husband, husband lose her hubby, not work, while she's busy caring for all the horses, then swinging with her boyfriend. Would ignore Ethan's calls on her hotel. I, I have no sympathy for her. I have no sympathy, but I know I'm sure that law enforcement and the judge has already looked at this mansion on a hill and knows that Jennifer Crumbly does not deserve to live in it. She doesn't. Her voice is awful. There's obviously a lot of awful about her. She's willing to represent. I mean, you, I understand law that there's a constitutional right to representation. I get that. I just don't care. I just don't care. I know that you all, oh, Tammy, that is very nice of you. And someone sent me one yesterday and I completely missed it. So I apologize. Thank you very much. This is happening all over the, it, it, I just don't understand why you have children if you don't want to have children. Lord knows you can go take care of the problem. 
nine, you know, what, eight months, especially in Michigan, eight months and whatever, 28 days, doesn't matter in Michigan. I don't live in Michigan for a lot of reasons, mainly snow and ice and all that. But golly, thank you, Tammy. Have a great day. Thank you so much. I have a doctor's appointment at 3.30 today. Shannon threw her own kids under the bus during her closing. Oh, did she? Stay single, people. Keep your money. Stay single. You live in sin if you want, but definitely have strong parameters about your home and how it's deeded and how you could protect it. I adore my three children too, but I certainly want them to have their teeth taken care of, and I don't want them to be M-U-R-D-Zers. I don't. That's true as well. Once you're married, if you get an inheritance in Florida, half goes to the hubby. And that goes back to Wendy. Right? Wendy had money. I think it's from her grandmother, right? That couple hundred thousand dollars was placed in Wendy's account prior to the, uh, either prior, or just prior to the divorce or after the divorce. Anyway, she didn't claim it on her financial docs. And that's what happened. Wife gets half the inheritance too. My husband and I, we share. I mean, I just, I don't know any other way. I'm sure women do it differently in different locations. We have separate accounts, but we're both on them. Just because of business stuff, it's just easier. But I pay all the household bills because that's easier. It just is. Sebastian's mom and stepdad, creepy, don't look for poor Sebastian. No, they don't. They haven't looked for him. They know exactly where he is. Uh, what part is she from? You know, I don't know. Let me see. I, I don't recall. I've not been there. She went to uh, Michigan State, but her father taught um, at... Michigan, which is why I think she went to Michigan State. He passed away. He passed away like two weeks after they got married. It was really quick. Chelsea. Chelsea, Michigan is where he's from. Chelsea. He whipped him with a belt too. I got whipped with a belt. Look at me. I think it only happened to me one time though. It happened to my siblings a lot more. Driving around on your car is what you do when you're looking for a missing dog. It's boots on the ground. And they put it on Facebook. They put their missing child on Facebook. The raw coach, the uncle, he had it up one time last year. He may have posted it and I just can't see it post there. But he said, I'm looking for my niece like a day later. And that was it. That was it. How do you even... I can tell the father has a hard time. Lori Page's father is has gray hair now. He obviously looks stressed. All of that. I get it. But you could make your life easier by asking for help. I mean, he doesn't answer Rudy Ferguson's calls. And Rudy Ferguson is the only one at this point, I believe, who's trying. Well, I think Margie does too. So the two out of three of us are trying to stay open to whatever happens. I am not. I'm getting very upset and I just, I, I, I just cannot imagine. I just cannot imagine. I just, I'm almost always on the state side because they have all the evidence to bring them. I mean, there are times obviously when a defense needs to be represented. But when you've got Nasser and all of those girls coming after, and you you just want to be on the team to make your name, it's just like Carl Steinbeck said. He talks often about defense and how they won't challenge like a Charlie Adelson defense theory of multiple extortions. They won't even challenge it because of the money. It's probably why I'm broke. Because I just cannot live like that. I mean, we just turned down and we let it go. Um, we fired the seller, a three and a half million dollar listing because it's not worth three and a half million dollars. I mean, it's not worth anywhere near it. The woman has destroyed the functionality of her house and doesn't want to hear. I'm like, okay. 
I mean, we could keep the listing in hopes that one day she comes to her senses, but she's not coming to her senses today. So why I, I can't help her if she doesn't want help. And so we no longer have a three and a half million dollar listing. There's plenty of agents that'll take that listing. It just won't be us. And I'm not better person for it. I, you know, maybe financially stupid for it, but I'm just not, I, you can't help people who don't want to be helped. And she doesn't want to be helped. She's got two, a bathroom. You can't even get in because it hasn't been worked on. You think someone who's paying three and a half million dollars for a property with a beach view it's really not, but she says it is. And doesn't doesn't want to fix the bathroom. We're we weren't allowed in the bathroom. You think the person buying it won't want to be in the bathroom? She has like six or seven suites that she rents out via Airbnb. She won't show anyone her rent rolls, how much money she's making on the property. So you know, sometimes you got to let loose. And, and I could not take a person like that. I couldn't sit next to a person like that. And you know how they do that, that shoulder rub, you know, the defense attorney shoulder rub out. No, goodbye. I don't want to smell him. I don't want to be in the presence of that man. Did I hear what Seth said about how poor Sebastian was? Oh, no. No, I didn't know that. I don't know why Jennifer C. didn't take the chance to tell her son she loved him and hugged him one last time. I don't know why. I think she thought she was going to be completely innocent. She didn't want him as a problem anymore. You've been married for 20 plus years since you were young. We had nothing when we met and it's all been gained together. Same as, I mean, my husband, who is the stepfather of my three children, If there was a Christmas thing, it was because of that man. Because my first ex-husband didn't have a lot of money. He was a social worker. So whatever we did, trips, whatever, it's because of him. I know he doesn't. At this point, he gets thanks for it. But of course, when they were younger, he didn't. I've always thanked him. Even that morning meeting at school, day of shooting, she wouldn't even sit near him, hug him, or tell him or anything. She was so mad at him. I can't imagine. Did Jennifer ask to bring her horses? This is a pretty treed lot, so I'm sure the horses, I mean, have been sold. Where did that $80,000 go? So if they made $80,000, you know, they have to pay the real estate agent, but they made money. Where's that money? Who's getting that? <laughs> right? That lady needs to sit down that three and a half million dollars. So this lady, just a side note, she, she thought she was smarter than the property appraiser in the county. It's not in Leon County. She thought she was smarter than that. So she wanted our, our agent, Scott and my agent, um, to go call the property appraiser and have her come out to the house. I would never have allowed this to happen if I'd known in advance, but I would have just, well, lady, you're nuts. But I mean, she probably wouldn't have listened. This is when this agent was with another broker. And so now the property appraiser goes out and see these six and seven suites being rented on Airbnb. So now she's a multifamily instead of a single family. And now she lost her homestead. So with Florida, you have a homestead of property. Your taxes are automatically can only go up like a very small amount every year. And now her taxes are going to be jacked up. And because it's a multifamily, it really lowers the value. It doesn't raise the value. She thinks it raised it, but it doesn't. It lowers it because she's not an appraiser. And when we asked her, I said to Scott and this gal, I said, hey, she should really get an appraisal. So we just have some sort of baseline to go by. We just have an air. The lady wanted to vet the appraiser. She wanted to make sure he wasn't from the home, the town that the, that the house is in. She wanted to control everything. I'm like, you can't, we can't work with that. We got to go. Did you discuss how new law with real estate agents? I saw in the headlights recently, but it's not a new law. It's a settlement with the National Association of Realtors that we had nothing to do with.
but we will be in, it will be forced upon us. And I talk about it with the agents. I, we we don't know much about it yet, so there's no point saying it much publicly. Driving to the post office to change your address. Bless your heart. Good for you, Sonny. Jennifer showed her true colors on the stand. The jury hated her. She said, I wouldn't change a thing. Right? Where's the boyfriend? Did anyone know where the boyfriend went? I mean... How's she going to pay her if she's living with her? Yeah, they have to pay something. Jennifer Crumbly's dad's just a teacher. Probably retired. He's in his 60s. Was she going to clean her house for her? Did you see the woman's hair? I'd be careful. If I were uh, Miss Thing, Shannon, I'd be careful of Jennifer Crumbly with my husband. That's what I would be careful of. This is her pose, right? Isn't that the pose that the woman makes? You did an amazing job. You're amazing. No, you're not. You're not really that amazing. Can you... Is she going to take care of her dogs? I don't know what she's going to do. What are other options for house arrest? There aren't any. (laughs) I mean, her own home is sold, so she can't go sit there. So there are no other options. The other option is the jail, the prison, and that's where she should go. Where's a female prison in Michigan? Huron Valley. It's the only woman's prison. Huron Valley, Michigan Department of Corrections. Here it is. Opened in 2009, so it's recent. Females all ages except under the age of 18 Prison capacity, 2006, employees 561. That's four per crook, so that's good. And that's it. Oh, they have a program brochure, hobbies, performing arts, prisoner creative program, Shakespeare, Zen, and yoga. That's fair. I don't have time for all that. How do I not have time for yoga and cosmetology and yet they get it in prison? Don't get me started. I can't look at that. I'm hilarious. Oh, thank you. It's a lot after my person. Did did anyone see my, I think I got rid of it. My spermatozoa glitter bomb I got yesterday from a show watcher. (laughs) Whose house is this? This is Shannon Smith's house. Shannon Smith's house. Is it normal for a defense attorney to offer her home as a place for the convicted? No. There is only one prison in Florida for women. So that means Katie and Donna will be in the same place. I don't think so. I think there's two. Wait, how many? I thought there were two. I know there's Lowell. Yeah, there are a couple. There is the Women's Reception Center. And that's in Ocala. And then Lowell Correctional is that the same thing? Hold on. Oh, Broward, Florida Women's, Lowell, and Union.
They have death row there. I heard it's pretty nasty. But then I also heard that there are, um, how should I say it? Like benefits to being at Lowell. Like there's perks. There's really no, it just says notable prisoners in Lowell, but there's really nothing, nothing out of the ordinary to me. The Women's Detention Center in Miami. They're, yeah, one's in Gainesville and one's in Ocala, I guess. Rachel Wade, second degree murder. Denise, Marissa Mowry. So there's really no one famous now. Except for Catherine Magbanua. And she's not even noted on there. She's not even noted on the Wikipedia. Florida Women's is in Ocala. Let me see. Gadsden Correctional. Oh, it's a private facility. I don't know if it takes. Does it take women? Oh, it is. It was housed for women, but it's private. I didn't realize that. It's private. Is it customary to keep defendants from the same case in separate prisons? Um, yes. Yeah. Patty, you need to get a van and act like you're searching for a criminal. There's a channel doing that on Sebastian Rogers' case, and I cannot handle it. Doing absolutely zero. Well... I don't have a van. I have a blue truck and crazy hair. So if I go get my private eye license, which I'm going to do over the summer and get my, um, my apprentice license, then then I can do that. But I need a nondescript. My husband has a nondescript car. I could use that. Jose Bias did give Casey Anthony, but it's not usual. I don't think it's a usual occurrence. I think that was just as weird. I mean, he's made a lot of money off her, so maybe he felt like, and she, of course, wasn't found guilty. It wasn't house arrest. Does Department of Corrections work at the private prisons, or would they have their own correction officers? Um... James would know. I mean, you'd be a privately employed. Florida. The Management and Training Corporation manages the facility, which can house up to 1,500. So in this case, they have 1,544 Inmates. It doesn't sound like many to me. But it's MTC, the Management and Training Corporation. I can't imagine it pays well. Library manager at Graceville. That's where Kalen was, the gentleman I interviewed. He didn't, he said it was $14.50 an hour. They're making bank off of these people. 
correction counselor, security clerk. Are you serious? $19 an hour. Substance abuse counselor, sergeant, $25.50. Not enough money in the world to go be abused by inmates. Plus, they have 400 something people in there watching, been doing this all week, claim to be searching main roads. How can that be a job? Somebody sends them money and they go get burgers. They really do. People send them money. I got to go look them up. What's the name of that show? What's the name of that channel? People. See, this is what I don't understand. Someone asked me to look up someone who. I, don't, I forget the gentleman's name, but it was a gentleman who was banned off of YouTube and they wanted to know where he was living now that he, I guess he was threatening some of his past subscribers. So he was banned on YouTube, but he's back on under someone else's channel. And so I found him and sent, you know, where he was. And I was watching the new channel that the guy's on and Lord have mercy. I mean, people are sending him hundreds and hundreds of dollars watching this Dude, I, I don't understand. I mean, it's your hard-earned money. I, I certainly would never ask for people to send me money. I just don't get it. I don't get why. I just don't understand that you're sending them money. What is it? Clue Minotti? Clue Minotti. Clue Minotti. Is this? Is this it? It's so disgusting. I've been watching just to see where they go, but they never, never literally searching. Oh, this. I'll have to watch this. Three minute views, triangulation, baby clue. Nine thousand subscribers and two hundred and fifty views. Is that her? Quick donate PayPal. Okay, if I ever put my, I, I'm not disparaging other people, but if you ever see me with a PayPal in my account, someone has hacked it. It will, it would just never happen. <laughs> just never happen. Other people would do really well and make their living at this. Like, and they, that's how they do it. Fantastic. Good for them. I want them to earn a living doing this. They're amazing marketers and amazing editors like Jay. Jay does amazing editing. I mean, he just, he's self-taught. Fancy fiction, quick on the finds, super cool annotations. Like she is amazing. They deserve that. But this, if you ever, I am a novice at best. You ever see a PayPal in my or Cash App? I would never, ever, ever. I'm just not that good. I would don't. If you want to buy a t shirt or something, that's one thing. And then it helps the company that makes the t shirts, but no, no, no. Then while talking about it, the think tank is a woman who just plays other people's videos all day, does nothing. That's <laughs> nothing. Well, now I got to go look. Damn. All right, well, I'm going to subscribe to this one and then hold on. What's the other one? The Think Tank. I mean, that's what I feel like I'm doing, though. I feel like I don't do anything, but hopefully I'm making you laugh. The Think Tank. 2,200 subscribers. A, a Think Tank is a channel that we all have a voice on. The only wrong answer is a rude answer. This is where we all can go, have a great conversation. TikTok, 
buy me a coffee. I heard that's very clever. Um, 1,200 videos and only 2,200 subscribers? It doesn't sound like I do a lot of things. Well, thank you, Debbie. But I really love a real estate snoop. I really do. That'd be a good name for a channel, the real estate snoop. I might, I might have to um, get a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? I'm going to have to tell Bling, make me a shirt. I'm going to have to do that. I think that's funny. But I, I don't understand this Apple revolt. I don't know anything. What's about this case? Does anyone know? The um, Apple Rivers thingy. The stabbing. I mean, some guy's colon came out. I love my real estate. Oh, thank you. I Real estate fascinates me too. Like, it's one thing to say to the court. Sorry, my shirt's falling down. It's one thing to say to the court, I would like to take her home and take care of her. It's another thing to show the house where you want to take her home and take care of her. Very different. And people may not think it's different, you know, but it's, it's different. It's a lot of money to be going in and housing this woman for 10 to 15 years. What are you getting out of it? You're getting something out of it. I just don't know what, but you're getting something. You have to be. There's no, th what is your end game? You know, you were a sucky attorney. You know, you blew it at the closing. What is your end game that you would think that that's okay? You connect real estate to true crime. Uh, and that is because it's so fast. That, I mean, there's where people live and how they live. I'm only sorry. I didn't get to that. Uh, I, they may have only shown one photo on that East house where the Crumbleys lived. We is watching the Apple Rebel trial. It's enough. Some of the footage and photos. Yeah, it's it's hard. I mean, I don't mind. I don't mind gross. I mean, I was a nurse. I really don't. I enjoy it. As a matter of fact, I am, you know, how did that work is my main goal. But I can't hear it. It's just why I like we. I like watching. Um, I haven't checked that email yet, but I will check it. Wait, but I like watching British TV because it doesn't show all the gore. It's more in your imagination. So I appreciate that a little bit. Money. When I was their age, I worked eight to five and an hour of brunch. You better not go over either answer to someone all day long. Right. I work all the time. I mean, I wake up at six 30 in the morning. I may not be up and showered, but I'm working in my bed like answering emails, approving posts. Like I'm always working. I will check that out. I don't know anything about Apple River stabbing, but there's currently a trial and it's bad. I heard it's really bad, like bad. His wife stabbing defendant testified on his behalf from the state, said she loves him. She divorced him to protect their assets. Well, isn't that nice? I think Florida is great with the real estate info. In Kentucky, you still have to visit your local PBA to get info. You do. But if you're looking, there's other ways to look for Kentucky because my my extended family's in Kentucky. And you can look on census data. It, it, it depends on how far you want to go back. But I have found other ways to find information in Kentucky. My finances do depend on what I do. But I'm not. I'm just not going to put my PayPal up there. First of all, I'm in cybersecurity. School-wise, I don't work at cybersecurity. But putting your PayPal on there is just asking for stuff. Like, I'm not asking for that to be hacked. I don't, I don't want to. She was not a prize. <laughs> Well, it was just a quick video, a quick live for an hour. I mean, it's really not quick.
uh, for Friday. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And remember that Jennifer Crumbly does not deserve to live here. She doesn't. And I don't know if anyone else cares. I'm sure they do. I'm sure millions of people care. But she does not deserve to live in this house. Knowing that she truly rejected her children, her child, her son, and is letting him rot in a jail. And probably, you know, I know she can't contact him, but she likely hasn't. And where were the grandparents? Dad was a teacher. The grandfather, who was the power of attorney of their house on East is a teacher in Florida. He's retired. So have a great weekend, everybody. True, I hope to see you tomorrow. If Please come up to me if you see me, True. Please, please, please. T, I caught a live at the end. Happy. Thank you, T. T, did you send me the package? Did you send me the gift, T? Did you? Did you send me some spermatozoa? <laughs> Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you.